Hi everybody and welcome back to Virtual Storytime with Castle Shannon Library. Today is Johnny Appleseed Day. So if you've never heard of Johnny Appleseed, he is a fictional tall tale folk uh, character that was not a real person, but a uh, folk tale is something that has been told for generations, normally told by word of mouth, although now we have things that are written down about them. Uh, think of it if you've ever heard of Paul Bunyan, or if you've ever heard of Joe Mazurak, who used to have the statue at Kennywood, which, oh, none of you that are watching probably remember that. Your parents probably do. Now I feel old. But, um, so stories like that, that's what Johnny Appleseed is. So we're going to read Johnny Appleseed this poem. It's a poem by, ooh, I think this is Reeve, R-E-E-V-E, -E -E, Lindbergh with paintings and pictures by Kathy Jacobson. So we're going to learn about the folk character Johnny Appleseed today. In the early days of the American frontier, when most of this nation was still wild, unsettled land, there lived a man of great courage and gentleness who traveled through the wilderness planting apple trees. His name was John Chapman, though he came to be known to generations of Americans as Johnny Appleseed. This is one story about his gift to our country. These apple trees were planted here a century ago, a hundred years of springtime bloom, a hundred years of snow. A hundred apple autumns with the wild geese flying by, a hundred years of applesauce and steaming apple pie. The man who planted apple trees once stood here on this land, a sack of seeds upon his back, a Bible in his hand. Young Hannah Goodwin saw him first, a stranger lean and lorn. His face was thin, his feet were bare, his clothing old and worn. The Goodwin family asked him in to dine and talk a while. America was lonely then. He'd traveled many a mile. He said he'd gladly stay to sup, but could not linger here. He had to go plant apple trees across the great frontier. He said it was a wide, wild land, a lonesome land and long. He said his apple sharp and sweet would make the country strong. The family listened while he spoke of forests green and grand, of prairies vast with waving grass, of rivers ribbed in sand. He spoke of families like their own, all moving bravely west, with guns and tots and cooking pots to claim the wilderness. And here they are moving along. Um, we'll see at the end, there's a map. So he started in Boston, Massachusetts, and he went to the state of Indiana. So across New England and the Midwest, which also includes, do these uh, rivers look familiar to you at all? It also includes Pennsylvania. I don't know if these are the rivers of Pennsylvania. I was just saying that to make a point. He said he'd bring them apple trees, our Lord's gift to the earth. He said the sun would warm his seeds, the rain would give them birth. He said that each good orchard grown would bear fruit as God planned to give the yearning pioneers a taste of promised land.
The Goodwin family wished him well and watched him leave alone. He carried neither gun nor knife, nor weapon did he own. For though he walked alone and lorn through dangerous land and wild, he said he'd harm no creature born, each one was God's own child. Young Hannah heard the tales of him all through her growing years, as he brought apples sharp and sweet to other pioneers. She heard he walked through day and night and through the winds that moan. She heard he walked in snow and rain that chilled him to the bone. And where he walked, she heard he gave his blessing softly thrown, the scattered seeds among the weeds, the sweet fruit wisely grown. She heard he loved the forest land and all its creatures too, wild deer and hare, wild wolf and bear, and every bird that flew. She heard the Indians trust in him, he knew the things they knew, which plants would heal or make a meal, which streams ran clear and true. He walked all trails and heard all tales, his orchard spread and grew, of where he went the deep rich scent of asshole, apple blossoms blew. You see why Miss Christy doesn't read poetry or write poetry because it gets her all pung pied. Old Hannah Goodwin saw him last when many years had gone. He came in by the orchard gate, a quiet hour passed on. Old Hannah knew that gentle smile, that face so long and thin. There was a Bible in his hand. He spoke of where he'd been. He'd walked all through America and all his scenes he'd sown. He planted apples sharp and sweet and swiftly they had grown. There was spicy apple cider now out on the western plain. There, wasn't, there was applesauce in Iowa and apple pie in Maine. Apples crossed the wide Missouri and down the Ohio, sharp and sweet across the land, they made our country grow. And look at that. There's all kinds of trees now as well as houses, and there's the river. Old Hannah Goodwin offered thanks for her own trees grown so tall. He said no thanks were owed to him, the Lord had made them all. To grow a country or a tree takes just the planter who will seed and tend till in the end the earth's best dreams come true. He said farewell and traveled on and did not come again, but in this orchard, sharp and sweet, his apples still remain. Old Hannah Goodwin talked of him in apple time each year, when the orchard came to harvest and the air was crisp and clear. She'd asked children to remember and to thank the Lord indeed for apple sharp and apple sweet and Johnny apple seed. And then this is, oh, I look, I already stand corrected at what I said at the beginning. So this tells us a little bit about who he was. I'm going to show you the map first. So this is the map. So it says start in Leominster, Massachusetts, born 1774 and died 1845 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we started up here and we crossed through. So we started in Massachusetts, we crossed through Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and the state of Indiana. So that's the map, and then in the back here, it tells us a little about Johnny Appleseed, and I was already wrong from what I told you from the beginning. 
Johnny Appleseed was a real person, although many of the tales told about him are probably not true. I was half right. People have been telling Johnny Appleseed stories for almost 200 years, so it is sometimes hard to separate the real history of his life from the legends. His name was John Chapman, and he was born in September 1774 in Leominster, Massachusetts, the son of Nathaniel Chapman, a farmer and carpenter who fought in the American Revolutionary War, and his wife Elizabeth. We don't know much about John Chapman's childhood, except that he probably grew up in the Connecticut Valley, but in 1797, when he was 23 years old, he was seen traveling west to plant his famous apple seeds in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and northern Indiana. Many people don't know this, but he even owned land in those states and established nurseries there to raise and care for apple trees he distributed to the settlers of the American frontier. Apples are very important to the wilderness settlements of really America as they were one of the few crops that could be grown and harvested easily and eaten in one form or another all year round. On the other hand, few pioneering families had room to take seedling apple trees along with all of their household goods when they traveled west. John Chapman provided the answer for many people with his seeds and his nurseries. He became known by the name Johnny Appleseed to grateful American settlers of the early 1800s. While he did not establish all of the original apple orchards in America, as people sometimes claim, he did play an important part in bringing apples to the frontier. John Chapman was also a devout Christian missionary who tried to explain and share his beliefs wherever he traveled. He was a follower of Emanuel Swedenborg, a Swedish philosopher who believed that we must live simply and in harmony with the natural world. John Chapman was said to have shown little interest in his personal appearance or in his possessions, but he had great love for all humanity and all living things. He gave away his trees to any families who could not afford them, and his kindness toward wild creatures, from bears to wolves to rattlesnakes to wasps, is well recorded. He was respected by the Indians and moved freely among them. John Chapman was known to be especially fond of children. He spent much time during his travels telling his adventures to the younger members of the households he visited. He died in Fort Wade, Indiana in March 1845, but his story, like the apple seeds he planted, will be part of our country forever. So, real person, some of the stories might be fake. I was close, so strike everything that I said at the beginning about uh, Paul Bunyan and Joe Mazurak. But that is the story of Johnny Appleseed. So maybe today you will eat some applesauce. You will check out the craft that is down below and pick up a make and take kit. You will do the movement and music video activity that we have. And you will join us back here next week for another virtual story time. Have a great day.